Shalom, covering. I'm Stephen Benoon, and you're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. I wanted to take and share with you guys a few scriptures that, uh, that I've been looking at in light of photographs that me and my wife have taken while we were in Rome recently. And um, I think you'll find these photographs rather interesting, especially in light of the scriptures. Uh, but I'm not really going to elaborate. Oh, just to tell you what the scriptures actually say and see how God leaves you in your own conclusion, especially with an organization that considers themselves a Christian church, a, the Vatican itself. Rome, supposed to be the mother of all churches and the head of the world churches. According to the two keys that are on the emblems that they have there, they claim to have both spiritual and temporal control, which is political control, of the entire world, that they exercise this right. It's something that many of the tour guides there make quite clear that Rome does have this power and authority. But let me just share with you some scriptures. Now, a couple of scriptures I don't have pulled up with me to share, but I just keep, you, keep them in mind, and that's they're found in Isaiah 14, 29, and also Isaiah 30, verse 6, about the flying serpent. Be sure to look those up as well. Very interesting scriptures. But Want to kind of keep a theme here for you, and so I'll start with Isaiah 27 and verse 1. It says, In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, <clears throat> even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. If we move over to Ezekiel 29 and verse 3, it says, Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which hath said, My river is mine own, and I have made it for myself. Moving into the book of Revelation, there were several of these uh, scriptures that were quite fascinating to me. And uh, they're in chapter 12, chapter 13, and chapter 20. Most of them falling in tw chapter 12 and chapter 13. Some of them very close together. So let me just read them with you. Chapter 12, verse 3 and 4, they run conclusively. It says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to, dev to devour her child as soon as it was born. Dropping down to verse 7, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels. Verse 9, The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He deceives the whole world? That's interesting, isn't it? He, ca uh, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Who was cast out? The dragon. What is he called? An old serpent. The devil. Hmm. Kind of reminds me of the scripture says, Why art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Do you know in Egyptian uh, culture, they believe that the serpent was the one that actually created the spirit realm. They believe that he's the bringer of light. Kind of odd that the Vatican uses this symbol as well, isn't it? Going into verse, um, going into verse thirteen, and when the dragon saw he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Verse 16, And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth, verse 17, with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's kind of interesting. So many people that do believe in Yeshua, believe in salvation, but yet very few of them keep the commandments of God. Perhaps it's the Jewish people that are starting to believe that he's the Messiah. But again, it was the dragon that was wroth with the woman. And he's the one that makes war with the remnant of her seed. 
Going into chapter 13, verse 2, And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were the feet of a bear, and his mouth is the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and his great authority. Verse 4 in chapter 13, And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Never seen so much worship of idols in all of my life than what I've seen in Rome. St. Peter's Basilica, they take from Pantheon, which is, I forget, something of the gods. It was, it's a place there in Rome. They took the statue of Jupiter, placed it inside of St. Peter's, renamed it, and called it the statue of Peter. Clearly, as you see, the people go by, rub its feet, and it's supposed to give them the, the, any wish they desire, as long as they rub the feet. Well, he practically rubbed his right foot slap off of his statue there. I wonder how many people really know that they're rubbing Jupiter's feet. Anyway. Chapter 13, verse 11, And I will behold another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now we move into chapter 16, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. That's in verse 13. Uh, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And chapter 20, verse 2 concludes, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. You see, the dragon, Satan, is a very busy guy. And it seems that his influence spreads into several people. Actually, quite a bit of people throughout time. According to the scripture we just read, he deceiveth the whole world. No wonder why few people believe what we're saying. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Remember us in your giving, if you would. There's much more work to be done, and there's still a great need. We need your help in bringing these things out. God bless you, and there of thought.